not been my intention to speak so soon. In as much as the good gentleman opposite has seen it fit to speak in disparaging terms about my tenure as chairman of the Public Accounts Committee, reaching back, it appears, into the archives to find language he attributes to me in the press saying what the Public Accounts Committee ought to do. I stand, Mr. Speaker, by that language. That is indeed what the Public Accounts Committee ought to do. There is no doubt in my mind that that is what it ought to do. Indeed, what we are seeking to do today is to create a framework to allow it to do that. And that is a distinction, perhaps, which has been lost on the good gentleman. He has now imagined some call to me saying he was anxious about why the committee was not meeting and why the committee was not doing its work. Well, I don't know who he called. Might well have been an episode that he had. But the truth is that I received no such call and I want Hansard to reflect. The good gentleman never contacted me as a member of that committee. He never pressed anything in relation to that committee. He at the time was there as well as Patrice Nisbet, the good member from number 11, who I believe was then Attorney General. But neither of them saw it fit to come and to say anything in relation to that matter. So the posture today, as if they were so anxious to have something done, they knew because in the meetings that we had, and for all the years that I was there in a useless position, they understood Mr. Speaker, that there was no, there was no, there were no teeth. You say you're useless? There was no framework. There was no ability for us to move forward in relation to the work to be done. Mr. Speaker, the facts are there. This country would have become an independent nation since the 19th of September, 1983. Indeed. I believe that we will celebrate 34 years, nearly three and a half decades of independence come September next month. Mm -hmm. I challenge the House and I challenge the nation to tell us when any public accounts committee has functioned. No, never. No. So for, for, for us to cherry pick, for us to cherry pick now, if my memory serves, we had an NRP Palm administration yes. from 83 to 95. Yes. We then had a Labour administration from 95 to 2010. We then had a Labour NRP administration from 2010 until we got rid of them in 2015. Mm -hmm. That is the reality. You want facts? Those are the facts. Yes. Tell me when during that period of time has the PAC ever functioned? So you mean, so you mean, Mr. Speaker, everybody Everybody for 34 years of independence, all the parliamentarians that sat in this August chamber, none of them had the will, if we have to follow the debate, to do anything with the Public Accounts Committee. It is what I would call abject nonsense as an argument. It is no point. I heard the good mover say, Sandy Point. I would say, don't insult. Sandy point. It's not even Sandy. It is no point at all. None point. It is nonsense. Masquerading, dressed up. Yes. yes. In elegant prose, perhaps, but nonsense when stripped bare. You mean to tell me that for 34 years of independence, not one parliamentarian in this house had the will? Yes. Including you. Yes. Not one had the will? That is the argument. Yes. That is what we've been asked. Including yes. you? That is why I did not. To accept the reality is. And no matter how we run, no matter how we dance, no matter what we seek to say or do, the reality is there was never in this country a framework for the pack to operate. We sat in a room and everybody watching each other, nobody knew where to start. You can't find a minute from any pack anywhere in the history of the country. No guidance, no precedent, nothing. That is the reality. It is not my fault that nobody has ever accused the member from number two of being bright. It is not my fault, Mr. Speaker. 
If she has never been accused of being bright, that is not my problem. Let us move forward with the debate. Because this is an argument which I feel is a nonsensical argument. The truth is, we all know and accept that we have never had the necessary framework. It has never existed. So, the next big argument, I don't plan to stay too long. The next big argument, they say that this has been reduced to examining the report of the director of audit. First of all, let me be clear that that is not true. That is not true. The, the section, the section, forgive me, Mr. Speaker, the section which speaks to section 8, no, section 7, the powers and duties of the Public Accounts Committee. Let me read. A, to examine the report of the Director of Audit that is tabled in the National Assembly. Seems to me that some stop there. But there's a B. To report to the National Assembly with any comment it thinks fit on any items or matters in the report of the Director of Audit referred to in paragraph A, or any circumstances connected with it that the committee thinks should be drawn to the attention of the Assembly. The center is, is reading from, from the, the bill. At, at least we could listen what he's saying. Because he's reading directly from the, the, the bill. And if somebody thinks they can, can create a point of order from that, do so. But I don't think it's a good thing to be interrupting while somebody's reading, quoting from the bill itself. Mr. Speaker, let me start Continue. again because it might have been a, a, a distraction, a rule, you see. So I want the people to understand that this is what the section says. The powers and duties of the Public Accounts Committee are A, to examine the report of the Director of the Audit, Director of Audit that is tabled in the National Assembly. B, to report to the National Assembly with any comment it thinks fit on any items or matters in the report of the Director of Audit referred to in paragraph A, or any circumstances connected with it that the committee thinks should be drawn to the attention of the National Assembly. And C, to inquire in writing into any question connected with the report of the Director of Audit referred to in paragraph A and report to the National Assembly on that matter. It is, with respect, Mr. Speaker, a wide remit. Because the Director of Audit, as I understand it, is an independent body provided for under our Constitution. And the role of the Director of Audit is to look at the whole broad spectrum of government expenditure, of the government's accounts. That is why our constitutional construct is such that the Director of Audit has to bring and table that report here through the Minister of Finance annually. When we do the budget, we bring it and we lay it here. That is the statement of the accounts as audited. And so when that comes in, that provides the Public Accounts Committee now is, is in effect a parliamentary committee, yes. a parliamentary construct that will look at this report of all, an omnibus report yes. of the government's accounts That's his view. as reflected by the independent office of the auditor. Yes. You understand? Yes. Mr. Speaker, I'm trying to school, I'm trying to school those who probably didn't quite understand what they were reading. Yes. The Director of Audit audits the government's entire account. Yes. Everything that is spent and dealt with by every ministry. Yes. So, the Director of Audit, when he brings his report, and that is put here, this, this legislation is saying, this bill is saying, that the Public Accounts Committee then has the ability to look to that and to inquire into anything that flows from that. Well, if you can inquire into anything, that flows from a document which reflects the full remit of the government's finances. But what do you need wider than that? Yes. What do you need that's wider than that? I heard, I heard the reference being made. I heard the reference being made 
to say that before they had a wider remit. Yeah. What was the wider remit? I have picked up because the only reference to a public accounts committee was in the standing orders. Yeah. Only reference. Mm -hmm. Nothing in all the laws of St. Christopher and Nevis you could find. Nothing in all the constitutional instruments for St. Kitts and Nevis. It was here in the standing orders, the only place that you could find any reference to the pact. And when it spoke, when it spoke, Mr. Speaker, to the functions, the duties, and powers of the Public Accounts Committee. It is important. Let me read it into the record. 70, standing order 70, subsection 4. The duties and powers of the Public Accounts Committee shall be as follows. A, to ascertain that the authorized expenditure during each financial year, including supplementary expenditure, has been applied to the purposes prescribed by the legislature. I want to emphasize those words, prescribed by the legislature. B, to scrutinize the causes which may have led to any excess over authorized expenditure and to verify applications of savings on other authorized items of expenditure. C, C, what? You will not find any information about over expenditure in the direct of audit report? Mr. Speaker, what, I'm, I'm what is this I'm hearing? Never been what is this I'm hearing? Mr. Speaker, let me continue. Let me continue. See, see. Mr. Speaker, let me continue. This is as expressed in standing order 70. See, to make an effective, to make an effective examination, to make an effective examination of public accounts kept in any department of government. Let me say that again. To make an effective examination of public accounts kept in any, what? Government department. And D, to summon any public officer to give any information or any explanation or to produce any records or documents which a committee may consider necessary in the performance of its duties. That was the remit. Those, those were the powers. How on earth could that be wider? I hear somebody talking about statutory corporations. The remit of this speaks to A, monies applied as prescribed by the legislature. C, accounts kept in any department of government. Let me ask rhetorically, is Casper a department of government? Is Mr. 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 Speaker, it is apparent to me that English, which ought to be a first language for us, is not being treated as such. It is not being understood as such. Because, Mr. Speaker, if the Director of Audit is charged with looking at every single department, every ministry, every dollar that is spent, if in the report from the Director of Audit you get any idea of excesses in terms of expenditure, savings, or over expenditure. It is all spelt out. I ought to know every budget. That's what I used to look to when I was on the cold hard benches over there. <laughs> every budget, director of audit, you overspend here, you overspend there. And what this is saying is that the legislation now is providing a neat approach to this. It's saying the director of audit as an independent constitutional body, you do the work. Yes. You do your work. Do you produce the audited reports. Once they come here, the Public Accounts Committee, a committee of the parliament, can look at it. Yes. And in relation to any question, yes. if it says in their public works overspent by 10 million, yes. it is saying that the Public Accounts Committee can inquire into that. Yes into the circumstances concerning that. Yes. And it gives the power yes. in this bill, this bill, mm -hmm. as Section 8, to summon witnesses. Yes. To say to people, you must come. Yes. You, must, you must come and you must explain how it is public work spent $10 million more than was budgeted. That is the process, yes. Mr. Speaker. Yes. How we good conscience anybody with a modicum of reason could come into this house to say to the house and to the nation that we have come somehow to, to produce some legislation which is less than. Yes. The truth is, is that what we have come to do, what we have come to do is to provide 
is to provide at last, at last, after 34 years of independence, to produce a framework yes. that the nation can now use yes. and the public can now see yes. that this is what we committed to. I have had occasion to speak publicly. Very good. And I have said, Mr. Speaker, that this unity government yes. campaign on two planks, yes. prosperity agenda and, and a good governance agenda. Those were the two planks. The prosperity agenda is doing well. Don't ask me, do not ask me, Mr. Speaker, ask the IMF. Don't ask me, ask the Central Bank. Don't ask me, ask the CDB. By any measure, St. Kitts and Nevis is doing well economically. Don't ask me, ask Social Security, which has just, just saw some numbers from Social Security yesterday, which is saying our wage bill is nearly a billion dollars in 2016. Highest in the history. Jobs. Yes. Highest in history. Yes. Wages, yes. highest in history. Everything is a lie once it's good news in the country. Yes. Don't ask Mr. Yes. Speaker, me. Yes. Ask TDC. Yes. Ask Hosfords. Yes. Because they are saying that they are recording yes. their highest profits. Yes. Ask them if the prosperity agenda is working in the country. Credit there you must ask. Don't ask us. Police, credit union. Ask them. Yes. Mr. Speaker. We have spent the first two years focused on our prosperity agenda. We are now midterm and we are saying it is now time to focus on the second plank, which is our good governance agenda. And here we are, here we are, here we are with the first in what I am told is going to be a suite of legislation that will come. Public accounts. You know, I see the good leader of the opposition all over the media making noise. You want public accounts. You want public accounts. You know, like you ring up yourself, you want it now. You want it now. You want public accounts. He saying you want it now. But now it comes. Now it comes. And you expect that he will support it. He don't want it now. Mr. Speaker, they must make up their mind. He ringing up himself. He want it. He want it. But know that it has come. He don't want it. See, come in here. You see how you walk in. He ringing up himself. He not you walk. I'm happy he has come because it's all over the media. All over the media. All over the media. Crying and screaming out how bad he want public accounts. Well, no public accounts come. What you balling for? I don't understand what you're balling for. The public accounts has come. And the Prime Minister move on the bill is 100% correct. This is not meant to be some political tool. This is meant to be a serious effort to look at with a critical way the report from the Director of Audit. And once you get that report to analyze and ask the necessary questions, to yes. summon witnesses if you need to. All the powers are right there, but for the first time, encapsulated in legislation. Yes. We don't anymore have to wonder what they do in England. Yes. We don't have to call somebody, as I did, mm -hmm. at the Commonwealth to say, well, what happens in Australia? We don't call it before. Never had to do all of that. When I was the chair, that is what happened. That's what I'm speaking to. When I was the chair, the Commonwealth had in fact said, that they were prepared to offer. They were prepared to offer some assistance because they recognized there was a vacuum here in St. Kitts and Nevis. Well, look what we've now done. We are filling the vacuum. We are filling the vacuum. We are saying to the nation that when we said we were bringing a good governance agenda, we were serious about what we were saying. And the proof of the pudding is always in the eating. So here we are now coming to the house. And we are saying to those who are championing all of a sudden. All of a sudden, you know, words like transparency have entered the lexicon. Never existed before. Never, Never existed what they talk about corruption, corruption though. Imagine that. Transparency is now a word in the lexicon of the Labour Party. I'm so impressed. Really? Never heard that language yet in all my years on those cold benches over there. Nobody was interested in that. 
Huh? If you are interested, but if you are interested in transparency, how you have six elected members could get the motion of confidence in the house? Transparency on a Friday afternoon when I am I am on the ocean, you call a house? Huh? To pass boundaries? That's transparency? Yes, 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 yes. Yes. Getting to a point where I'm going to maybe begin to apply the rules in a very strict manner and only allow interruptions in the form of a point of order. So I'll say no more that on that. Continue on to remember. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, as I say, these words have now popped up. And the lexicon of the members opposite, transparency and the like. I'm happy to see they're using the language. Okay. It is modern language. It is language which was hitherto unknown to them. Yes. But never too late. Never too late. Because if they practiced what they preached, you would never have had a house convened on a Friday afternoon. When I was on the high seas between the BVI and St. Thomas, somebody called me and said, Lord of mercy, don't get try to change the boundaries on Iowa. <laughs> <laughs> That's what the person called Less than 10 minutes, no. Less than 10 minutes. Huh? Huh? Lord of mercy, never try to change the board. And even with that, even with that, even with that, you know, that is the reality. That is what we have dealt with. So when they come now on the posture, you have to, you have to examine them against their record. So, Mr. 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 Speaker, I think, Mr. Speaker, that I want to make another point. The point that I wish to make speaks to Section 4 of the bill. And again, what have we tried to do as a government? We have said that we don't want anything left to interpretation. We do not want to be subject to the importation of ideas, whether they come from England, or Australia, or elsewhere in the Commonwealth. We have said no. We will, we will provide by statute that there shall be a chairman of the committee pursuant to the provision of section 70 of the standing orders. And if the leader of the opposition is a member of the committee, he or she shall be offered the option to chair the committee before all other members. See what we have done? We have now enshrined, and when this bill is passed today, we will have enshrined that the leader of the opposition, once he's a member, will have the option to be chairman. Never before has there been any such provision in the law of St. Kitts and Nevis. <laughs> Never before. And if the other side wishes to dispute that, let them point me to the section. You want, you want to point it, it has never before been enshrined in the law of the country. That is why, that is why, Mr. Speaker, when, that is why, Mr. Speaker, when the honorable gentleman before me spoke, he brought some story about 1989 and said that someone who was not the leader of the opposition became the chairman of the PAC. But that was entirely consistent with what the standing order provided. We are now saying, by way of statute, this is a mature government. A mature government in a mature democracy. We are saying that we're not going to leave this anymore to the whim and fancy of any sitting government. We are making a provision by law that once the leader of the opposition is a member of the PAC, he will have the option to be the chair. I would have thought they would have supported that since they plan to be over there for a while. They will, they will be chairing the PAC for a long, long time. Nothing is wrong with that. They have rules now. They have rules now. So the truth of the matter is, Mr. Speaker, that we have, we have made provision now and we have brought into law, into written law, black and white, 
that any law student or any lawyer or any judge can pick up and peruse. We are not now looking, Mr. Speaker, to any issues about what the practice and custom, and we have to go search to dusty books somewhere to find out. We are no longer needing to do that. We are saying in a modern parliament, we are a modern government, committed to the principles of transparency, honoring our commitment to the people that we made up and down the length and breadth of this country, that we will deliver good governance, a good governance agenda to them. And what have we done? We've come here with the legislation. And we've come here to say that the leader of the opposition, once he's a member of the PAC, he will be the man. He will be the man. That is the position now enshrined in our law. Historic, first time that we can boast of any such provision anywhere in the legislative instruments of our country. So, Speaker, let us remember that there is, Mr. Speaker, no constitutional provision for the Public Accounts Committee. The move I would have spoken, I believe, it was to Trinidad, where they have enshrined it in the Constitution. We have not seen it fit to do that here. The framers of our Constitution did not do that. And so we found it, reference to it, in the standing orders, which, of course, are part of the National Assembly Elections Act. And so the difficulty that we are seeking to address today is a difficulty that has existed since independence. It's a difficulty that many who have sat in government over the years have not seen it fit to do anything about. It's a difficulty that we have now come at this halfway point in our term to say as we now pivot to deliver on that second plank. We, to we pivot to deliver on that second plank. What is now bill 3%? That, Mr. Speaker, we have come with a bit of legislation, which when I looked at it, I thought to myself, the parliament today will be short. I said that the gentleman on this side who gave lengthy statements from ministers, those will be the longest speeches. Because I could not imagine that members of the opposition would have difficulty. Supporting that we have now come to do something which for 20 years they failed to do. I could not imagine they would have had difficulty, Mr. Speaker, that we have now come to do in the 34th year of our independence something which no parliament in this country has ever done. And so that is what I believed. And so coming in, I said to myself, this will be a short day today because the eyes will have it and there'll be eyes all around. But now I'm hearing all kinds of cataflam. They're up in the house here with much sound and fury. Clearly, either not having read the bill or not understanding that which they have read. Because for someone to come, if someone could come and say that this bill is only a review of the director of audit, it means they do not understand the role of the director of audit. And if they don't understand that basic function, then clearly they can't understand what the bill is saying. And that is the reality. So you see, Mr. Speaker, when exposed, we recognize that it is all chaff, that the wind bloweth away. There's no substance to it. It's sound and fury to try and persuade some, the dwindling few of the public, that somehow the Labour Party is still relevant and still is saying something in the House which they can somehow cling to. I am saying to them, sometimes you see a good thing, you just say it's a good thing, you move on. There will be legitimate areas for dispute, yes. disagreement, and differences of opinion. But not this. Uh, no. Not this. No. <laughs> I don't understand every time we come into this house with a piece, we bring, what was it, the banking, FATCA. Yeah. We bring FATCA in here, we only pick it up off the shelf where they leave it and bring it and say, we're going to pass it and we get, they criticize FATCA. They <laughs> start the cost. The alleged say, we pick it up and say, Lord, we got to pass it, we bring it. The reality, the reality, Mr. Speaker, is that the members of the opposition must now start to learn and appreciate. Start to learn and appreciate. That there's no need. Oh, you know that. 
Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker. You see all these side winds? Side winds. Because the reality, the reality is and the reality will continue to be. It's not everything you must kick at. No. It's not everything you must criticize. No. And when you see a good government doing good for the country yes. and delivering where you fail to deliver, you must just say, no, you must just say, all I must say is that, well done. Well done. Because everything that comes in here, they criticize. Everything. And the truth of the matter is that this legislation seeks to do what they failed to do for 20 years. Provide a legislative framework, provide the necessary rubric for which and within which the Public Accounts Committee can function. And I am not going to be like some to predict doom and gloom. I am confident that the good gentleman who is now leader of the opposition will acquit himself well <laughs> as the chairman of the Public Accounts yeah, Committee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm confident. Yes. I'll go further and say he will grow into the role. <laughs> he will grow. Like not in stature, because that is that horse has already bolted. But he will grow into the role. Because he will have time to grow into the role. Yes. That's the reality. You will have time to grow into the role. Get accustomed to it. Get accustomed to it. So that is the new reality in the country. And so they come in here, and I wonder sometimes if they bother to read, address their minds to it, understand what it is we are seeking to do. And to come. No. <laughs> a leadership. No. Huh? That's what you mean? <laughs> Mr. Speaker? Mr. Speaker? We, ne we, need, we, need, we need to get to a stage in our country where the public can have some confidence that when we enter this house and we come here to discuss serious business, that the public, the public, Mr. Speaker, will be able to look on and expect that we'll have a sensible and rational debate. And where there are legitimate issues and legitimate differences of opinion, those will be ventilated. But not the kind of grandstanding and posturing that we have seen today, because it is unnecessary. It's unnecessary. Because at the end of the day, this government is simply now laying out its good governance legislative agenda. That's what they're doing. And we'll be coming back. That's what the AG said. Time and time again. We'll be coming back because, you see, we made a commitment to the people of the country. I don't talk about promises. When I deal with the public, I talk about commitment, commitment made, commitment kept. And today is an historic day in the country. Regardless of what people may wish to say, today is an historic day in our country. Today we take a giant leap forward in terms of transparency and good governance. A giant leap forward. It took us over three decades. But praise be to God, we're here now. And the unity government is delivering this legislation for times such as this. And not only are we doing so, but we're expressing that magnanimity and saying, let the leader of the opposition cheer. Yes. <laughs> Give him the legislative authority to cheer. So we are saying, he will be the first to do a report because yes. we continue to remain confident that he will do his job. Yes. That's the boss. He do a report. He'll be the boss of the pack. <laughs> so that is the truth, Mr. Speaker. So when the legislation, not a lengthy piece of legislation, when the legislation is looked at in its entirety, it is well intentioned, it is well meaning and it hits the mark. It achieves the objectives. Yeah. We yeah. sat down, we discussed it. It achieves the objectives of allowing this parliament finally to have a pack that has a basis for which it can function. That's what it does. And Mr. Speaker, 
I know this legislation is going to pass. It's going to pass because we are not a minority government, you see. We have the numbers over here. So I know it will pass. But I'm hopeful. I am hopeful. I am hopeful, Mr. Speaker, that the members opposite, the members opposite, will find a way to support the good governance agenda. Yes. It is not only for us in unity, it is also for them, and it is for the country. And when we see these types of advances being made, that will put us among those countries in the world which have demonstrated in word and in deed that they are committed to the principles of openness, transparency, and good government, that they should support it. They should support it. And rescue us, Mr. Speaker, from the position where we found ourselves for over three decades as an independent nation of not having any legislative framework to guide the work of this important committee. And so with those few words, Mr. Speaker, I wish to say that I wish this bill safe passage for this House. And I ask my colleagues opposite to really consider what they're doing. They were saying, goes, consider yourselves and be wise. Yeah. And support the good Sorry. governance agenda, not for unity, but for the country that we all love and this country that we all serve. That's the, again. the vision when it comes. Don't even that. Mr. Speaker, with those few words, Mr. Speaker, let me not believe it. With those few words, I wish to build safe passage. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Stay up to date with news, programs, and activities of the government with SKNIS. Like us on Facebook. Listen to us on SoundCloud. Follow us on Twitter. and watch our videos on YouTube. Connect with us today. SKNIS, St. Kitts and Nevis Information Service.